Hello and welcome. My name is Stefan Czech. I'm living in Germany. I'm a DOP, Steadicam operator and filmmaker. And today I want to have a closer look on uh, editing software. It calls Edios Pro 7. I work over eight years now with Edios. In earlier times it was a 32-bit application, but it works fine for DV, HDV and even full HD. So when I work with uh, the DSLR material right out of the 5D Mark II, Mark III, AX1, whatever, I put anything, everything on my timeline, uh, push the space bar and it runs in real time with no conversion, with no transcoding, with no pre-rendering in the background or whatever tricks the software normally use to try to deliver a re near real-time editing. Now in version 7, Edios are capable to do some more than only editing HD in full resolution in real-time. Edios 7 delivers 4K in real time. When it comes down to 4K, we see we have four times more pixels than in HD and we have four times bigger files than in full HD. And this is one of the disadvantages to work everything in 4K at the moment. But to be honest, at the moment 95% of all uh, the footage shooting in 4K will produce and post producted only in 2K or in 1080p. The reason is easy. There are only a few displays out there delivers the full 4K uh, stream and we have not the right um, a base for 4K delivers to the customers like on a Blu-ray or something like this. So this will happen in the future but we have 4K cameras today and probably we want to shoot with them to be future-proof, to use this material we're shooting today in five or six or seven years. I like to work with DSLRs and so the Canon 1DC is uh, the proper thing to work with. And to be honest, in the last three years we learned to work with this, um, with this kind of cameras, with the form factor. And we have all this stuff like shoulder mounts and tripods and so on fit in perfectly on this size on the form of the DSLR and so it is consequent to look on the Canon 1DC. The problem on this is um, the compression. The compression is a motion JPEG and most of the software out there had some really problems to work with them natively directly from the camera. And I like to work like this, pull out the CF card of the camera, put it in in the computer and start editing, not converting, not transforming in another codec or, or whatever. And this is what makes Edios so interesting. Let's take a look. When we try to play back a 4K material on a normal computer, it looks like this. This is a 4K material shot with a Canon 1DC and running on a normal computer. A computer with Windows 7 Professional, um, an i7 CPU, 3 GHz, so it's not a brand new computer. I have 6 GB RAM. When we go to the graphic card, we see also this is only 512 MB on a NVIDIA 9800 GT card. Let's go to EDIUS. Here's the same clip we saw before. Let's look in full screen. I start, double click, and now I see in full screen the 4K clip. First of all, it is Edios version 7. The new version of Edios 7 is a completely 64-bit application. But first, let's look on the properties of this project. And you see this is a 4K timeline, 4096 by 2160. 
25 frames per second, 8 bit. So this is a real 4K timeline and as you see, I can swap this. Let's have a look on the properties of the clip. It is a clip right out of the Canon 1DC. We have a 4K, progressive, motion JPEG. So there is no other compression, there is no down convert or conversion in, in another format. Let's play back the timeline. Of course I can scrap too, that's not a problem. And the question is, how did Edius make this happen? Take a closer look at this area of the window. When I hit the spacebar, you see 121 on the right side and a counting number on the left side. This is the buffer of Edius. So Edius is able to buffer the, the next frame ahead. So when it scrubbed to the uh, timeline, and this is not really uh, difficult for Edius in real time, um, at the same time it looks 120 frames ahead. Is there any transition, any uh, effect, any specialty on the timeline, on the clips? And he calculate this on flight. There is no need to convert to um, adapt it in another format or something like this. Let's go a step forward. What's happened when we have a transition? Set a transition and let it run. And you see really no big deal. Make the transition a little bit, little bit longer. Starts here and you see Aegis recalculate all the things they need and make a really nice transition. We have here two clips of a sunflower. This was shot in the normal picture profile and this was shot in the Canon Lock profile. So it's really flat, you have no blowing out highlights and you have no really dark areas. So this picture definitely needs a color correction. Let's put on a three-way color correction. Open up the adjustment windows and now we can push up the saturations. A little bit less of contrast in the middle tones and more in the darker and, in the, and less in the highlights. So then we can see before and after. Let's push a little bit more the saturation and then you see the left side is the original, the right side is the corrected way. We go outside so we have a color correction on this tab and you see it's running in real time. What is really interesting is when we bring some other footage right into the same timeline. So for this I have a footage shot on the 5D Mark III. When we go to the properties we see it is a 720p material in 50 frames per second. Now I can say please play this clip in 25p and then we have a really nice slow-mo. And of course in real time. When you have a closer look on the buffer, so this is nothing Edios afraid of. Let's take another clip. This is a clip in full HD, 1920 by 1080. Also shoot on the 5D Mark III with 25 frames per second. Let me go to the layout and say, give me the original size. Then we see the full HD in a 4K timeline in this size. But we want to fit this to, uh, to the 4K timeline. We go in here and now we have a 2K material on a 4K timeline. This is 4K, transition to 1080p, transition to 720 P in 50% uh, slow-mo. And of course we can mix this with other formats. 
For instance, this is a shot making on the 5D Mark III, um, recorded in a different codec. So this is 1080p in 25 frames per second, recorded on an Apple ProRes HQ422, recorded on an Atomos Samurai Blade. And of course I can drop this footage into my timeline and it works absolutely smoothly. But as I said before, over 95% of all the footage shooting 4K is produced only in 1080p. One reason, of course, is the future proof. It means that in five or six years you have a really high uh, resolution uh, footage and you can use it with the news material. The other way is to switch right here into um, a 2K or 1080p project. Let's select uh, 1920 by 1080, 8 bit. Hit OK and now you see the 4K footage running on a 2K timeline. And of course it works smoothly. Biggest advantage is the ability to crop into a frame. Let's look on this frame. Now we have a medium wide shot for this sunflower. Let's go here and in this case the 4K material was fit into the 2K timeline. Let's go to the layouter and say OK, bring this up to 100%. And now you see the advantage of 4K material. You have nearly four times bigger than in uh, 1080p and now you are able and you see how big the 4K footage is on a 2K timeline and now you can reframe your picture. And now you have one shot but you have two completely different framings. Okay, let's play a little bit more. I put a chrominance filter on this clip. Let's open the adjustment menu. In chrominance I able to select a specific color. In this case I want to grab the yellow one from the sunflower. It's really really quick and dirty. And when I choose this color now I can bring some filters inside and outside of the selection. In this case I want to desaturate all the outside. Now you see all the outside from the sunflower becomes desaturated. And here we have the 4K material on a 2K timeline with a chrominance filter right away. One last example. For this I take um, footage from a Sony EX1, also in the same timeline. I put a mask filter on them. With this mask filter I'm able to bring um, a filter, an effect on specific parts of the image. Now I want to have some areas and outside the area I want to bring a filter um, it calls a soft focus filter. So all the readings are in German but uh, you can read the numbers and I think you get the idea of what I want to talk about. Here you see the results. Outside we have a blur effect. Um, let's do this on zero so we don't want to light it up but more blurring. Okay, and now I select um, soft border, let's say 200 pixel. That looks nice. And now I want to move all these areas with the original picture. 
I start here and then I can set some keyframes at the beginning I readjust the position of the areas I don't want to have this effect go to the the end and then reposition also the selection and of course it works in real time. Let's bring all this together and I think this speaks for itself we have 4k Two K material. Seven twenty P fifty frames per second. Um, slow down to a nice slow mo. We have some effects like chromanines filter. And we have a soft focus filter with um, some keyframes animated. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope you get some new ideas probably to get a new view on your post-production and even if you want to edit your 4k material uh, without converting, without thinking what can I do to speed up um, all the things. If you work one week in uh, real time or with a real time editing system, I guarantee you don't want to step back. For all of you, you want to try out this, uh, please go on the website from Grass Valley, download the demo version for 30 days. It's completely free and it's complete. So you can use everything in EDIOS, include the 4K capability to um, play around to have some tests with your footage and you will see it is really really fun to bring all this together 4k material uh, 2k footage or whatever it doesn't matter which kind of codec you bring into the system everything works in first place EDIOS works only on PC but on the other side when you are living in the Mac world and you use parallels you can use all the specific features of EDUS also. So install your parallels, start a Windows option and start your EDUS and you will see everything works depending on your on your CPU. If your CPU is an uh, i5 or i7 with a little bit of RAM and you will get the same performance as I show you before. I hope you like this podcast. I hope uh, you like the, the kind of presentation I made, uh, please visit my website, is this in German, or please visit my channels in YouTube and Vimeo. There are lots of other podcasts and um, reviews of some technical stuff like the LED lights from Dado Lights. I have a really depth in uh, work through and step by step uh, how to work with a 5D Mark III and the C 100 from Canon with the external recorder from Atomos, the Ninja 2 and the Samurai Blade. I have some uh, views on some size lenses, some Sakuto stuff, uh, a lot of things and there will be more in the future. And as I said always, all this stuff, the camera, the lenses, the software, the lights are only tools, really nice tools, but they're only tools, tools for us to tell the story hopefully to tell the story nicer, better, in a better quality, in the easiest way, in the best way we can tell our story with our movie, with our film. With this and best regards, your Stefan Czech.